We apologize for the interruption in the post the game fallout, but we are going to shift away from that because it turns out over the course of the entire year, Ohio State still played some pretty good defense. That is Jeremy Birmingham. I am Austin Ward. These are snap judgments. They are brought to you by Byers Auto. The Big Ten confirmed it, Berm. Other than maybe not making four stops in the second half on Saturday, Ohio State's defense was still pretty good. Yeah, it's unfortunate that you have to throw in that uh, addendum in there, but that's that's life. Uh, you are uh, familiar with good football uh, if you're watching Ohio State, and the Buckeyes played it all year long. And even though they fell short on Saturday, um, they had a handful of players who certainly stood above and beyond uh, the rest of this season. And the Big Ten honored them on Tuesday with some uh, postseason awards, uh, starting with Tommy Eichenberg, who I think it's funny because a, lo- a year ago, I think we all believed Tommy Eichenberg was the right there with Jack Campbell from Iowa, as the defensive player of the year in the Big Ten and the, definitely the linebacker of the year in the Big Ten. This year maybe didn't feel quite as, what's the word I'm looking for, um, dominant from Tommy yeah. Eichenberg, but he is the Big Ten's linebacker of the year. And um, I, I don't know. This is one of those awards sometimes where like you get it for what you did a year ago and not what you did this year. Yeah, I think that Tommy Eichenberg is going to go hand in hand with this conversation about people worrying about Ohio State's defense and criticizing certainly what happened in the second half. We can all do that. I don't want this show to all be about what happened on Saturday because these awards are supposed to be a reflection of the entire year. And Ohio State finished number two in the country in scoring defense and number three in the country in total defense. Um, A lot of people would take that. And, And then sometimes you come up just a little bit short. Ohio State was in position to win that game at the end, but that we don't have to keep talking about that on this show. But the fact that Tommy came back on Saturday and did not appear to be 100% after a couple of weeks off and got beat a couple of times in coverage tends to overshadow, I think, the same deal. Not just the previous nine games that he played, uh, and he's not supposed to be getting this award for the work that he did in his junior season the year before, but sometimes you do get career achievement uh, honors, to your point, Berm. He had been really, really good and really key to Ohio State rising up those national rankings before that. And and I don't have a problem with it, uh, at least in this regard. I, he he should have won it a year ago. He didn't. We're going to have probably the same conversation about Marvin Harrison and the Blitnikoff in a couple weeks, uh, but that's that's jumping ahead. Like I, I'm okay with this. I don't agree with everything on the All Big Ten list, and we'll get into that, but Tommy, Tommy earned this, and the problems that they had in the in, in the second half on Saturday and as he was working through injury and rust and and I think maybe more schematic issues with Ohio State's linebackers being out of position against some of that stuff against tight ends. I don't think I don't have any issue whatsoever. Don't think that should be held against him. Yeah, I mean again, as you mentioned, this is a top three defense throughout the entire season. He's the leader of that defense. And I think he's a guy that has earned a ton of respect from coaches and media around the league for the way he handles himself on and off the field. And I He's one of those players where if you ask the 13 other coaches in the Big Ten, like, do you want this guy as your starting middle linebacker? They'd all say yes. And, and that's why Tommy Eichenberg wins this award. Um, it's not a statistics-driven award. It's actually a spot where this year his his statistical output is, is not what it was a year ago. Num- obviously, missed games. But number two, he was asked to do different things for Ohio State. And I think... Smart football people around the league recognize that and acknowledge that his job was not to get all the tackles this year. It was to set up the defense a little bit different. And Jim Knowles and Ryan Day have just spoken so glowingly about Tommy and what he is for the defense, the leader of the defense, the quarterback of the defense, call it whatever you want. Like This is a guy who who is going to spend a long time playing in the NFL as a traditional inside linebacker and, and uh, people, who, whoever gets to cover him at the next stop, are going to love the way he handles his business too. I don't know if the people who cover him will. I mean, they will like love that. the fact that they don't have to deal with anything other than just saying, good job, Tommy. And he'll go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, all right. So we're okay with that decision. Not a surprise, I guess that it's been a long time coming. Here's where my issues begin with the big 10, uh, voters, the all defensive team, where in the world is Jordan Hancock? And how did you come to this verdict that he's not even honorable mention? Like I, I felt like in November, he had become the most indispensable part of one of the best defenses in the country. He's not even an honorable mention selection. 
Hey, that's great news. That's great news for the 2024 Ohio State defense, isn't it? No, because I don't think that uh, ah. NFL talent evaluators are going to say, ooh, you know what? Big Ten media and the coaches didn't have this guy on their team. I don't know if we can make him a second-round draft pick. I don't know what his grade evaluation is going to be. I don't I don't know that he would get back first uh, first round. Please definitely go uh, from the evaluation, uh, the feedback that he gets. Um, he may decide to go anyway. I don't know what that situation is going to be like for him. Uh, it would be fun to, to cover him for another year because he was so freaking good in that nickel role. The later you got in the year, it, it was a little bit back and forth, and maybe the pure counting numbers don't look great, although – I think it was 35 tackles, two interceptions, one for a touchdown, two forced fumbles and a sack, and the ability to play both the run and the pass and, and the role that he took on when Lathan Ransom got injured. I don't understand it because I believe that a dozen players from Ohio State at least made the honorable mention list. And Jordan Hancock you know, was basically playing a starting role for Ohio State down the stretch and made some of the biggest, most important plays of the year for the Buckeyes. I, this one defies belief for me. Yeah, I don't know if it's because he's sort of a, a man without a position or maybe he played less snaps than other guys. I, I don't know. I mean, all you have to do is is cut that film on and you can see the impact that Jordan Hancock has made on the Ohio State defense. And again, if you're an Ohio State fan, you're hoping you get another season to to watch him do that and, and see the impact he can make. They will certainly need that uh, a year from now as they try to, you know, bounce back and not lose every part of the defense. But uh it's it's weird because, as you said, his impact is undeniable. And even if his snap counts were lower than some other guys, the results were certainly not. And the interception against Rutgers was one of the biggest plays of the season for the Ohio State defense. Multiple times, um, that, you know, against Penn State and others, where he's diving into the backfield and, and cutting down running backs and behind the line of scrimmage. Like the 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 number of impact plays he made. Uh, should outweigh the number of total plays he played, but that's uh, unfortunately not seemingly the way it goes. All right, was that the first thing that jumped out to you, or did you have another uh, another take on the All Big Ten defensive team? I mean, uh, Tyleek Williams making the second team All Big Ten after the year he had is somewhat shocking to me. I guess uh, he was really, really, really good all year long, and I know the league does have some pretty strong defensive tackle, uh, you know, players. Um, three from Michigan who are certainly in that conversation, uh, Newton at Illinois. There's a lot of good players around the league at that position, but Ty Leak's impact to me um, until Jordan Hancock really emerged at the end of October uh, was Ty Leak Williams was the story of the defense. So, um, you know, I, he, he had a little bit of a, of a leveling off in the last three or four weeks. And I think maybe that's where, where he ends up on second team. But, um, you know, for him, he's a player that, it, unbelievably, it, four months ago now, and this, you know, before the season started, you're like, yeah, I don't, is this year he's even gonna? Is he even gonna be a guy that the Buckeyes count on this year? Is he gonna be a guy that just sort of uh, gets lost in the wash? And, and he ended up being one of the stars of the defense. And uh, I, I think there's a case for him to be made as the first team All Big Ten, but I, I don't think that there's much to complain about with that. Jordan Hancock not making any list is is indefensible. I I went again to uh, the Ohio State secondary and Lathan Ransom being honorable mention. I can understand how it happened because yeah. he misses. You know these That's things often come down come down to stat stat counting like raw numbers and then recency bias and playing in the biggest games and and Lathan Ransom was dinged on both accounts there because he missed the last month with that foot injury. But I think that that does a real disservice and I think if you're if you're thinking about this and trying to put his season in context for the rest of the safeties in the Big Ten, well, what did Ohio State look like without him? And for a couple of weeks, it got by just fine. But on Saturday, in two of the most high leverage snaps that Michigan had, there was a play that whatever happened with Denzel Burke, uh, that should have been an interception at the end of it. But that pass that goes right past Malik Hartford, uh, I think if Lathan Ransom is there, that potentially is an interception. Don't, can't prove that. Don't know for sure. I feel like it It probably would have been. And then Sonny Styles misses the tackle on uh, you know, the touchdown run for Blake Corum. I can't prove that Lathan would have made that tackle either. But uh, I like his chances. And, and again, that's nitpicking. And it's also not to take you know, shots at a freshman safety or to criticize Sonny Styles. Like Blake Corum's a very good running back. And J.J. McCarthy did 
put that ball where it needed to be. Although Ohio, Ohio State, I know for sure, feels like the coverage and the call was correct to take advantage of that play. Um, and and there is a sense in the Woody that if Lathan had been on the field, that those plays would have been made. That underscores the value to me that he's probably better than an honorable mention player in the Big Ten in the grand scheme of things. But injuries happen, and, and you can understand why that that hurts. But you know, at the same time, these voters also looked at Tommy Eichenberg missing for a couple of weeks and and took that into account and didn't change. So uh, I I wish it was more clear. I wish it was able everyone was able to get this perfect on their ballots every time. But I know that that's not reality. I, I'm not I'm not upset about it, but I do feel like Lathan deserved more. Yeah, and I think the argument can be made that the defense took less of a step back without Tommy Eichenberg than it did with without Lathan Ransom, and and that's I guess the the crux of that weird conversation like who who who's more valuable um at the end of the season you could argue certainly that it was uh Lathan ransom not being out there that made the biggest impact because cody simon had played so um well in place of tommy eichenberg but um as you said i mean there, there's 14 teams there's a lot of guys playing a lot of football um honorable mention for Lathan ransom considering the impact he had throughout the season uh seems a little low but it's one of those things where like these awards don't matter, but they do matter because that's what Perry Eliano is turning around and selling to his recruits and saying, Hey, we've got three first or second team, all big 10 guys at safety. And that should be the case. And, and, and it's not because you, you know, Josh Proctor, second team or, or third team, uh, and you have an opportunity there to say, hey, these, these are our guys. This is what we did after one year. And, um, when they're not given the proper, uh, platitudes, it does affect the way that you have to sell things moving forward because anyone who can watch the games saw the improvement that Ohio State had in their safety play all year long. But then when you have to remove the key part of that and the, the biggest, you know, guy in that, in that mix, it becomes harder to, to say to a recruit, Hey, this is what we did. Oh, uh, he's not, he's honorable mention. Cool. Like, yeah. Well, and I think that that's what Jaden Felding, second well, team all big 10. Yeah. It's a win for Parker Fleming. Is it? I don't know. I was just, just saying. You just wanted to add it in there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, that's the list. I, I, it feels it feels odd, Berm. It shouldn't. Like, I, I tried to make this point from the beginning. Like, putting everything for Ohio State into the, con, into the perspective of what happened on Saturday is unfair. Like, these guys had an impressive body of work before that. It stings them to no end. They they don't want individual awards, and I'm not trying to present this as a silver lining or telling anybody to feel better and, and just move on. And like, I'm not saying that, but they're only going to get to go through this once. They played over the course of the year good seasons, and individuals should earn a claim for that. Like They wanted gold pants. They wanted to be in Indianapolis. They're obviously spending this week holding out hope that they get some help on championship weekend instead of like, you know, I, I don't Tommy Eichenberg, what is he going to do with this? Like he'll probably make it a doorstop in the short term, but 20 years from now that that's significant. And I, I do think that when guys get snubbed like Jordan Hancock did, and if he goes and declares for the draft, which, you know, we don't know for sure what his decision will be as he, as these guys all go through their process and get ready for the next step. Like those are the things that you look back on in your career and you feel pretty good about it. Like, Yep, man, that one got away from us at the end, but I had a really good season. The, a lot of people recognize that. And I do think that that's important because like, if if all we're ever going to evaluate is what happens in the game, then why are they going to play all the rest of them? Like the rest, they, they were really good players over the other 11 games. Some of these guys are going to be high round NFL draft picks. And it is. I think they do deserve credit for that, even if they're in pain and the fan base is as well. Yeah, and the reality is, uh, if that is what motivates you uh, and you want to change the way that the, 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 that taste left in your mouth after the one game, uh, more so than the previous 11, which makes sense in a lot of ways, come back. You have every right to come back. All of them, every <laughs> single one of them can return to Ohio State next year, including Tommy Eichenberg if he chose. So, uh you have your opportunity if that's what you want to do. So um, for Tyleek Williams, for Michael Hall, who ends up on the third team, for um, you know Lathan Ransom, for Jordan Hancock, for Denzel Burke, for Davis and Igmanosin, for JT Tumaloa and Jack Sawyer, who Jack finishes on the second team. I think there's an argument that Jack maybe had a better year than JT Tumaloa did if you really want to 
you know, get into the minutia of their day, you know, game to game play, um, they can all come back. They can all be putting themselves in a better position for these awards that don't matter now, but do matter in 20 years. And they can all put themselves in a position to walk out of uh, Columbus for the final time with a pair of gold pants by just saying, Hey, you know what? We're going to, we're going to, we're going to fix what we didn't uh, fix this year. And, and now will they, I, I doubt all of them will, but I think that th- I think there is, I think there is a part of this discussion where this does motivate guys in, in ways to, to say, Hey, uh, there's, there's unfinished business. Well, and some of the NFL draft evaluations may as well. That's the busy period of that's facing Ohio State in December. No matter what happens uh, with the college football playoff selection show on Sunday, it's going to be a busy month. That's Ohio State's defenders are going to have an opportunity to think about that. And they had a good season individually and collectively minus one half, I suppose. But they earned those honors on one Tuesday. One half where they gave up three field goals and a touch. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. That's... It's just not, it's, it's hard to figure out what to make of all that. And I can't get it out of my brain, but I'm really trying uh, because there's a lot more uh, to appreciate still for Ohio State. And there's still an opportunity ahead of them, both this year, potentially, and next. We'll see what happens. Who knows? We'll break it down either way on Snap Judgments. They're brought to you by Byers Auto. The Big Ten offensive team will be released on Wednesday. We'll see what uh, the voters got right and wrong about that with some more Snap Judgments. He's Burr. I'm Austin. We'll talk to you then.